What is up everyone? Quick video for you guys today on how I studied for the MCAT. So the way this video is going to work is first I'm going to go over a Kaplan course I took, talk you through my experience with that, what I've heard about other courses, to see if you want to um, invest in one of those. The next part is going to be going over the four content areas of the MCAT and how I studied for each one. Alright, so let's get into it. First of all, I took a Kaplan course. Um, it was a six week intensive course over the summer. The way the course worked was we met twice a week in class for four hours. Essentially, they would assign us homework of like different chapters to go over before we'd get into class. In class, it was a lot of like test taking strategies and not too much content review. They wanted us to do the content review on our own. Now, that class honestly did not work out very well for me. The big issue with it for me was that it was too fast paced. Within each week, they would assign us like 15 chapters to do. Um, to cover in one week and I just felt like it was not enough time for me to cover things especially subjects like biochem or psych and sociology which a lot of the things I was learning I was seeing for the first time or I didn't already have a strong grasp of it and that course was more designed for you already know most of the content and you're just gonna fly through it really quickly which was fine for me in the chem um, and the OCHEM and stuff like that that I was already good at, but because I was a lot, a lot weaker in the bio and psych portions, I felt like I needed more time to study those things. And I actually fell behind very early on in the course and didn't really apply myself and get as much out of it because of that. Personally, I would not recommend the Kaplan course. I didn't find it very helpful for me. However, something I have heard is that Princeton Review does more content heavy classes. So they'll actually teach you some of the material. And I think that might have been more helpful to me. The, the one downside to a content-based um, prep program is that it might go over material you already know and you're just sitting there. For some people that might help. For me, I'm an auditory learner so hearing things really helps me. Something the Kaplan course did help me a lot with was after the course had already ended, I used their biochem and their psych sociology video lectures. So they had made video lectures for both of those subjects because they were new content areas to the MCAT. And each one was like 20 hours worth of videos. And so I'd watch the videos, go through them with the textbook next to me and take detailed notes on them. And that is one of the main reasons that my bio score went up so much higher is because of I really sat down and did all of those videos for biochem. So that's the class. Now I'm going to talk about how I studied for each section. So for the chem physics section, the way that I studied was I basically went through the Kaplan books. Oh, by the way, the Kaplan course wasn't that helpful, but the books were extremely helpful. I love the fact that they uh, rank things in terms of how high yield that section is and how often it'll show up on the MCAT because that really helped me know like what things to really really memorize and what things I should just be familiar with. So with the chem part I did a lot of practice problems. I did problems in the back of the book. I think where I fell short was failing to review those things in the month before I took my test. I was doing great on the chem sections um, and the physics. The physics was very easy. Honestly don't put a lot of time into studying the physics because it makes up a very small chunk of the overall um, chem physics portion. So studying physics is not really worth it. It's just basic like mechanics and maybe a few electromagnetism problems. So the physics part was not bad. Ochem is also makes up a very small portion. So if you have already been strong in Ochem and you already understand like most of the fundamental reactions, you know, like you should know what an SN1 or an SN2 is, be comfortable with like running through some pretty easy mechanisms to figure out uh, where different, you know, substituents are gonna be placed. But other than that, like the OCHEM doesn't show up much on the test. So I wouldn't spend too much time on that. But yeah, definitely where I went wrong was not reviewing some of those gen chem equations bef right before the test, like in the week or two weeks before the test, I should have reviewed those equations because there were a couple problems that used some of those equations and I just couldn't call them to mind and that was really frustrating. Okay, now for cars or the critical reading section. So the way that I improved my score on this was actually a very simple method. So in the in the Kaplan course they were telling us like, "Oh, you should write down like a a summary of each paragraph on your scratch paper." 
And I was like, no way, like, I don't want to do that. I, I just know myself, I'm slow at writing, I hate writing out by hand. I was like, I don't want to do that. So I found my own way. And the way that I did it was through highlighting. So if you are about to take the test, I strongly recommend you learn the keyboard shortcuts. So what the, the, the shortcut for highlighting is Alt H. If you hit Alt H, you can just select anything to highlight. And what I would specifically focus on highlighting is one, you always want to keep track of who is saying what. So a lot of the questions on the critical reading section will be like, according to this person, how would they interpret this scenario? Or like, what would the author say about this? So it's all about like understanding what different perspectives are presented. So whenever the author would quote someone, I would immediately highlight who they're quoting. And then I would also, for each paragraph, I try to find one or two key things that as soon as I read those like three or four words, I know what that paragraph is about. So I would highlight people's opinions and what each paragraph was saying. Once I started doing that, my scores just shot up. Oh, another thing I should mention is I give myself a long time to read each path, longer than you might think you should be giving yourself but it actually ends up saving time in the end. So the critical reading section is an hour and 30 minutes, right? And there's nine passages, which means you get about 10 minutes per passage. Granted, some of them have six or seven questions, some of them have five. Um, so they're gonna take you, you know, different amounts of time. But the way that I kept track of it for myself was every time I finished answering all the questions for a passage, I would glance up at the time and make sure that I was on a 10 minute mark. And as long as I was on a 10 minute mark or a little bit before it, I knew that I was on track time-wise. Now, in those 10 minutes, I'd give myself four minutes to read the passage, just to read it. I would read it, highlighting as I'm going, using the Alt-H um, to, you know, to highlight quickly so I don't have to keep going up and clicking the highlight button. And then, once I had all that highlighted, I was actually able to fly through the questions, and they would only take me three to four minutes. So I'd usually be finishing each section, or I'd usually be finishing each passage with a couple minutes left, which would help me feel confident, be like, okay, like I have an extra minute for the next one, you know? And then I just keep going and keep building up an extra minute. And I think I ended up finishing the cars section with about 10 minutes left, which is a really good feeling to know that, you know, you have some extra time left. All right, now for bio biochem, the biggest thing in this one was fully and properly reading the passages. Once I started treating the bio biochem sections, almost as cars passages, I did way better. So a lot of the questions they're gonna ask is to use a small piece of information in the passage, like it's saying that a certain um, enzyme is a kinase. So if I highlight the word kinase and the name of the enzyme, I can immediately go back to that when I'm answering the question and be like, oh, it said this enzyme was a kinase, therefore, you know, I can answer the question, whatever it was asking. Does it phosphorylate something? I don't know, whatever. Um, the question was. So again, highlighting was key, especially in bio. The, um, the main things I would highlight is abbreviations. You'll notice in the bio sections, they abbreviate a lot of things. Abbre highlight all of those abbreviations. If they say like CP is this thing, highlight CP is this thing, so that when they ask in the question, they'll just use CP. They won't use the actual name of the protein or whatever that the question's asking about. They'll just use CP. So if you can instantly go back, then you can be like, oh, and then CP is this, and you already highlighted the function as well. So you wanna highlight the names of proteins and then, and then what their functions are, or the name of a bacteria, or whatever it is. Um, so you can instantly refer back to them. Once you get that down, honestly, the bio section became a breeze. Once I learned how to read like that, and obviously you need to learn what those terms are, like you need to know what a kinase is to be able to do the question, but um, you know that just goes back to your content review. So making sure that you know what the different types of enzymes are, what the different cell layers are, things like that. Then once you find them in the passage, you can easily apply it and do things very quickly. I finished the bio section with about 40 minutes extra. So that like, I just want you guys to know that it is possible to do the bio section very quickly once you have that mindset. And again, spend a lot of time on the passage and then you won't need as much time on the questions because you can just fly through them. <laughs> all right, for psych sociology, really all you need to do is memorize terms. I think that's the only thing 
to work on is memorizing terms. And again, where I fell short, similar to chem physics, was I didn't review those terms in the weeks preceding my MCAT. I kind of just was like, oh, I got this, like this is an easy section, and I blew it off. And I regret that a lot. So review those terms up until just a few days before your MCAT, just keep reviewing them, and you should be fine. All right. That was a lot of information. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. You can leave a comment on this video. You can DM me on Instagram. However you want to contact me, feel free. I'd be happy to give you any advice or answer any further questions you have. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Baby, baby.